I got three over, older brothers. Uh, my brother Lewis is four years older than I am. Jerome is uh, eight years older than I am. And George is nine years older than I am. So I'm the baby in my family. And they always let me know that I'm still the baby. I don't care what I've been able to do in my career. But they were very instrumental in me uh, getting into the game of basketball because they all played. And I initially, getting into the game, uh, I just wanted to be like my older brothers. So they really worked with me a lot early on in my career, and uh, they got me started. I wasn't really that good initially. Uh, I only loved the game because I was around it so much, but I kept working at it. I really didn't blossom and develop into a really good basketball player until I was about in the ninth grade. A couple of my older brothers came really, really close to winning uh, state championships, but uh, by the time that I came along, we had some guys that were about my age, and we had been playing basketball together since we were in the eighth and ninth grade, and man, we just developed a good chemistry, and we won back-to-back -back state championships my junior and senior year. That was probably my greatest memory of my high school days. When you're a home state, kid and and everybody's recruiting you uh, everybody wants you to stay at home and that was a really tough decision for me because Georgia was only about maybe two hours north had I played football I probably it would have been an easy decision to go to Georgia but it was basketball and I was being recruited by North Carolina Georgia Tech Maryland Pittsburgh Minnesota and, you know, to have that type of recognition to be in that little small town, that had never happened before. So it was a big decision because everywhere I went, I really had fun. But obviously when you come to the University of Kentucky and you see the history and tradition of this basketball program, it's unlike anything I had ever seen before. But there was a lot of pressure from the hometown people and fans to go to University of Georgia. And actually, Auburn was right there because uh, Chuck Person and I was being recruited uh, by Auburn, who had Charles Barkley, who's only a year older than we are. And Charles tried to convince me that, hey, Kenny, if I can get you and Chuck, we can dethrone uh, Kentucky in the SEC and we can win this thing. And I was like, well, Bowie and Turpin was a little bit more attractive, you know, Barkley was good, Chuck was good. We met in the SEC tournament, you know, later on in my career, and arguably the, probably the biggest moment of my basketball career maybe came against Charles Barkley. When Kentucky called, and I got a letter from Kentucky, he said, Kenny, he called me in his office uh, after school one day, he said, uh, the Kentucky people, they want to come down and see you. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. He was like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> this is the University of Kentucky, you know, calling. And he could tell by my reaction I had no idea because I really wasn't into college basketball at that time. So I remember him getting me a book, you know, to read about the history of Kentucky basketball. And then you go back to all the way to Adolph Ruff and the championships and how we've been good from one decade and all of the great players that Kentucky get. I mean, it really uh, piqued my curiosity from the standpoint that, again, do I belong? Can a little small town guy go into that type of situation and accept that challenge? Hunt Brothers Pizza has been proudly serving communities across America for over 25 years. Download the Hunt Brothers Pizza app to find one of our 7,500 locations inside a convenience store near you. Are you a sporting shooter, hunter, or looking for the best concealed carry option? Bud's Gun Shop and Range is Kentucky's largest selection of firearms, ammunition, and firearm accessories. Located on Industry Road in Lexington. When they finally set up this meeting for me to come to Kentucky, I remember a lot of things that Coach Hall said to me during that recruiting trip that eventually came true. He was brutally honest with me in terms of my ability and talent. He said, son, you can go into any school anywhere and be a great basketball player. He said, I'm going to give you that. 
He said, but what sets Kentucky apart is our history and tradition, not only competing for championships and developing players, but it's the things that can happen in your life after basketball is done. If you go to school, get your degree, keep your nose clean, even if you don't play in the NBA, you can have a life in Kentucky where you're gonna have the connections uh, after your career is over with if you do the things that, that you're supposed to do. And of course, when he, when he left, me, my mom, and dad, we kind of laughed. Said, man, that guy right there was really trying to set a program saying that, you know, people are going to respond to you 25 and 30 years after you've left the University of Kentucky. But, of course, today I'm a living witness that all the things that have happened in my life before Kentucky and after UK, I would say that decision changed my life forever because of um, the rapport that I have with the fans and, and, and the people that I've met throughout my career, I think that's the most important thing to me. How do you describe the fans of Kentucky basketball? <laughs> kind of like, uh, I guess, Calipari said, they're crazy, they're, they're, they're nuts, but in, in a good way. In a good way because we, Kentucky fans want to win at everything. And it's an enormous amount of pressure uh, to play here. They want to be number one when the season starts. They want to be number one when the season over. They want to be number one in recruiting. They want to have the most fans at the NCAA tournament games. They want to have the most tweets of any college team out there. So that's, that's what you're dealing with. It takes a very special person to be able to deal with what other people would call distractions and outside influences that comes along with this, and which amazes me to this day that you know Calipari has been able to do what he's been able to do in this short period of time. Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, big on commitment. We never set out to be the largest auto dealer in Kentucky. He just set out to provide people reliable vehicles and great customer service. And for the last 50 years, that's what we've done. I got my nickname, you know, you know Skywalker. You know, it was either it was either Bowie uh, or Coach Leonard Hamilton. It was after the very first Midnight Madness, which was my freshman year, and we had about 11,000 people come out to Memorial Coliseum, and. That's the first time I ever played in front of that many people. I mean, I had played in the McDonald's All-American game in Chicago, but I think it was only about like 8,000 people at that game. So in my very first Midnight Madness practice, we have 11,000 people at Memorial Coliseum, and I'm nervous. And I never knew that I could jump the way that I did on that night. I knew I could dunk and do something, but when you're nervous and excited and that energy gets to going, you know, it's just amazing on what you can do. And I remember just doing all of these crazy dunks and the fans kept getting louder and louder and louder and it seemed like the louder they got, the higher I jumped. And after it was all over, and I think Sam and Leonard Hamilton, they was talking, man, they was like, man, he was like a Skywalker. And, you know, Sam was over there on his crutches, and they were talking about it, and one of the reporters heard it. And that's how that nickname kind of, I guess, stuck with me probably from just my very first Midnight Madness practice. You know, you come in on a bus, I mean, you got people literally going crazy. Not only do you have babies, uh, crying and old ladies crying, you have grown men crying <laughs> that, you know, they're finally going to get an opportunity to see one of their favorite, you know, Wildcats. And those games, you know, for a guy like for me as a freshman, I mean, they were like real games. You know, they were different from practice because anytime that you put a team in front of a crowd, then the intensity goes up. And I remember the feeling that, you know, I just got you know, walking into those little small buildings. It was kind of like a scene out of the, a Hoosiers movie, you know, where you got people everywhere and, you know, these little small gyms, and they love basketball. And this was the only time that they probably was going to get a chance to see the Wildcat play. So it was just like the biggest game 
you know, for them. And it made, it was a competitive atmosphere for us, so it was a lot of fun. Charles Barkley, the SEC Player of the Year, you know, over, you know, Bowie and Turpin and the guys that we had on our team and probably deserved it. Man, that game was going back and forth and back and forth. And, of course, get down to the last, I guess, eight seconds in the ball game. We have the ball. Coach Hall calls a timeout. And, you know, he's in the huddle. He's drawing up this play. And he's going like, okay, they probably think we're going to go to Master and then go to Turpin or Bowie Kenny. Going to run this play. Going to have uh, Sam Bowie, Melvin Turpin set a double pick on the baseline. I'm going to rub my man off and come around to the elbow. Kenny, just when you get it, just don't worry about it. You're going to have enough time to just get it off. If it goes in, great, whatever. If worst possible scenario goes into overtime. Of course, my eyes probably got that big because I couldn't believe that he was actually drawing up a play for me. The coal industry's had a big impact on my life. My grandfather was a coal miner. My father was a coal miner. Coal is the largest driving force in our local economy. That's why I'm a friend of coal. Double Dogs is a great place to eat. In a single word, delicious. Somehow we, we, we go back out on the floor and actually Jim Masters and Dickey roles got reversed where Dickey couldn't get the ball. So Jim actually was a point guard on the play. I rubbed my uh, guy off that pick. And Bowie and Turpin was able to get just enough of Chuck Person to free me up. So when I caught it with about, I guess, two seconds ago, I had enough time to elevate. And I must admit, it wasn't the prettiest shot in the world. It was a, it was a line drive. It went straight and hit, hit, the, hit the front of the rim. And then it bounced up about two feet over the rim. And then it went switched back through with no time on the clock and of course as time expired the camera pans to Charles Barkley and he's crying you know on the floor a lot of fans you know call in on my radio show and they talk about that moment and they always say Kenny you're the only guy to make Charles Barkley cry when you come out and you go three of 33 from the field it's very difficult to beat anybody and the reason why I felt bad for Coach Hall was because this was supposed to be his year. We overcome, you know, a few bumps in the road and we we're right there. Like you say, at halftime, we we're exactly where we want to be. If we shoot 20 percent, 25, 30 percent, we win the ball game. But 9.1 percent and, of course, a couple years later, I get drafted by the New York Knicks, and Patrick Ewan always <laughs> reminded me about how Georgetown beat us that year. And boy, what could you say? You know, just had to, t had to take it. Every guy that has experienced senior night, I think that we will all say that it's uh, probably the most special time, you know, in your basketball career while you're at the University of Kentucky. It doesn't make any difference if you, you know, had bigger and better games. That was your last opportunity to play on the floor of Rupp Arena. And you get a chance to share that moment with your family and your friends. Uh, I look at pictures still to this day. My mother and father were so proud, you know, of me and my accomplishments and you know, the four years that I had at the University of Kentucky. And when you see how happy they are and, and the tears are flowing from their eyes, you know, you can't help but, you know, feel those emotions. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment, obviously, because you're so happy and so many memories, but it's kind of a sad occasion because you know that's going to be your last time actually playing on that floor. You finished your career at UK as a two-time All-American, second team in 85, first team consensus in 86, which means everybody voted for you. Uh, two times SEC Player of the Year and three time All SEC First Team. It's got to make you feel pretty good. Well, when you look at all of the great players that have played here, man, I mean, Dan Issa, Jamal Mashburn, 
you know, Jack Gibbons, Tony Bell, Tayshawn Prince, I mean, even all the way up to the guys now with, you know, Wall, Anthony Davis, and all these guys, to still be, you know, sitting in that position in terms of accomplishments, being the second time all-time leading scorer. I was with uh, Dan Essel and Jack Gibbons last basketball season doing a autograph signing and we all laughed and said, you know what, we're going to be at the top of this list for a long time. You know, if these guys keep going, you know, after one year, they'll be willing us out of Rupp Arena. We'll be 80, 90 years old. We'll still be sitting at the top of the scoring list for your career. But it's a great accomplishment because it's such a great program. I and mean, you know that you've had so many coaches, players, and administrators that have been a part of it. And to still be considered, you know, one of the very best to, to ever lace it up to do it. I mean, that's, that's a humbling experience for me. And, and just like anything else, I think the older you get, the more you appreciate those accomplishments. I think what, while they're going on, you're just so young and you're into the moment, you don't understand what you're doing. But when you've been far removed from it, like we have now for about 30 years, I really do appreciate it. It was kind of ironic because it was a good dunk contest. Spud Webb well was in there. He was a the former defending champion. Um, and of course, it's hard to beat the little guy. And he was putting on the show, and somehow he got knocked out right before the semifinals, and it basically came down to me and Clyde Drexler. So I ended up winning, you know, the, the dunk contest. And the last dunk that I did, you, you probably don't remember this, but the last dunk I did was kind of a tribute to Larry Nance. We were playing summer ball back, and this is where we'll give Kyle Macy a lot of credit. I was trying to do some dunk, and you showed me a dunk where Larry Nance comes from under the basket where he's got the ball cup and he goes under the blackboard. It's a dunk that the first time I tried it, I think I almost broke my neck because I <laughs> couldn't swing it around and I... I almost hit my head on the backboard, and I was like, but I kept practicing them that summer. And I remember you telling me, Larry Nance is the only somebody I'd seen do that dunk. So the last dunk, when I knew, even if I missed the dunk, I pretty much had the thing won. On the last dunk I did, I did that dunk that you told me, the re coordination of uh, the Larry Nance. See, I never knew that, so now I can take partial credit. You can for, take partial for credit. For two championships. Yeah, that, that, there dunk. you go. There you go. The slam dunk <laughs> championship. It's all Kyle Macy. I'm happy that I've been able to handle all of the fame and high expectations and everything that been able to come along with it and still be a humble, you know, person and all of this. So I think uh, my parents and Guys like, you know, Coach Hall, you know, Hubie Brown, Rick Pitino, I played for some very good coaches who not only taught you about the game of basketball, but was able to share some things with you to help you become a better man and a better person. I think the biggest compliment that you can get is when people after 25 or 30 years say, Kenny, you know what I remember about you? You played the game hard. When, uh, when Kid Gilchrist was here a couple years ago, so many people would call in and say, Man, that guy reminds me of you, you know, when you were younger. You know, just the energy that, that he played with, uh, especially, you know, in my first couple of years. Sam Bowie, Melvin Turpin, Jim Masters, Dickie Bill, those guys were the star guys, and rightfully so. I just, I was just trying to get playing time and do whatever I could to get on the floor. Now, fortunately for me, that was something better than me by my older brothers and my high school coach, so... I was able to do that at an early age, and once you are able to have that type of attitude, it's just something that it's hard to teach. Either you got it or you don't. I mean, I think that when you got to try to motivate players to play hard and have the right attitude, something's wrong. You shouldn't have to coach that. That should be something that you bring every night, attitude and playing hard. I don't care how many points you score, how many rebounds, or how good or bad you play. The one thing that you can do each and every night is lay it on the line. And I think when I talk to fans and people, that seems to be the thing that they remember about me the most.